Hello and welcome everybody to our company presentation at this year's Focus on Microscopy. We're going to show you our multi-photon uh, microscope MPX. Uh, we're going to build it up live here on the optical table and show you some real imaging uh, later on. Um, my name is Lukas Kreiner. I'm the founder and CEO of Prospective Instruments and uh, I'm accompanied by Dr. Stephanie Kiedelin. She's our senior application scientist and she will actually do the imaging for you. Um, what you see here on my left side is actually a Mesospim uh, light sheet microscope developed by Fabian Voigt from the University of Zurich. We have uh, duplicated his uh, approach, which is uh, openly available on the internet, and modified it with some uh, minor details uh, to fit our needs. Um, it's a very interesting microscopy techno technology as well, and uh, we are looking forward to to see what we can get out of it. Anyway, let's come back to our multi-photon microscope. Uh, we have prepared an optical table for you. Actually, you can, put the, you can put the microscope on any table you want, except the room needs to, you need to be able to darken the room a little bit, but uh, an optical table is not required. You can put it on a wet bench, uh, even on an office desk, on your office desk, if it's uh, dark enough, actually. So what comes next? We're going to build it up here. Uh, first, we're going to put the breadboard on the optical table. Then we're going to put uh, XYZ translation stages from Zebra on our optical breadboard. Uh, they give you about 100 millimeter travel in X, Y, and Z, but uh, actually you can customize. Uh, we can customize the travel range uh, that fits to your needs, and uh, uh, we're not, uh, of course, uh, bound to Zebra stages alone. Next, once the Zebra stages are built on the optical table, we're going to move the uh, controller, the microscope control and the scan head in here and we're going to position the scan head on top of the Sabre stages, fix it firmly and uh, then we're going to see some uh, uh, pre-recorded uh, session uh, presenting our company, our vision and also what is inside our MPX uh, multi-photon microscope and after that uh, Steffi will uh, show you some live imaging of slides. Uh, we have prepared two slides uh, that you can image uh, either in, in EPI uh, with the Brightfield EPI modality and with the two photon modality. And you can see how easy it is to actually work with the system to set it up and uh, get your imaging done quickly and uh, turnkey. Okay, so I would say let's get going. Uh, we build it up. Um, probably we're not going to talk too much uh, while we build it up. Uh, first, we need to do some screwing. Uh, later on, uh, some cabling to, you know, get the uh, mouse and the keyboard and the monitor uh, attached to the uh, microscope controller. But after that, yeah, it's uh, done maybe in five or ten minutes and after that you're ready, you're all set and ready to image. So uh, let's get going. Okay, so this is the uh, optical breadboard that we're going to ship with uh, every um, uh, system actually. Uh, it's 600 by 600 millimeter. Uh, if you have your own optical breadboard, it's also fine. We can fix it there. But uh, typically, that's what how we're going to ship our multi-photon microscope with it. And uh, so we're going to put here the um, uh, saber stages. So we have here um, an adapter plate uh, that makes the saber stages uh, easily fit to the breadboard. And uh, we're going to fix it with the M6 screws. So they are right over here. So depending on your environment, uh, we recommend that you have some uh, uh, stabilization of your breadboard. Uh, you, later on, you, you will see we're going to use some cushions, which are uh, about that size. We're going to put them in all four corners. And so the breadboard is mechanically decoupled a little bit from the environment. But actually, because the laser and everything is uh, all put together in a single frame, the microscope is inherently very stable. So actually you don't need really a vibration isolated optical table. It's fair enough when you just uh, have actually a quiet, relatively quiet environment and uh, uh, you should get decent images with it. So next we're going to roll in the uh, controller and the scan head. Typically we ship it on a pallet, uh, but um, of course, we're not going to show you the pallet, but that's, uh, as you can see here, this is the scan head. So we're going to position the scan head on top of the uh, Z stage from Zebra. We're going to fix it to this blade. Later on, we're going to move it more closer to the camera so you can actually see the imaging live. Okay. So 
So we do have some mechanical stops here. Actually, that help you to uh, get the uh, uh, scan head fixed to the uh, support from Saber. Very good. So we are nearly set up. Uh, we're going to move the microscope forward a little bit so you can have a better view on it. And uh, now there needs to be some cabling done. Um, the PC is included in the microscope controller, so we need to fix the keyboard, the mouse, the screen. Actually, the screen is over here. Uh, we already prepared that. Uh, so we're going to plug in the uh, HDMI cable of the screen and actually the joystick. Uh, Stephanie is holding the joystick. That's very convenient, actually, to control the microscope. Uh, it gives you easy access to X, Y, and Z while you align your microscope to your sample or to your probe. And it's a very handy tool, actually. So it's also standard with uh, delivery included. And um, OK, so let's get going. We're going to plug in everything, and uh, we will be back in any minute. That took us a few minutes to uh, cable everything together. So uh, we are starting up the PC here. The uh, femtosecond laser is started up. The uh, Galvo scanners are started up. And uh, also the uh, HNL LED light engine for the uh, wide field AP fluorescence imaging is also starting up. So it will take a few minutes until the system is ready, uh, that everything is thermalized and ready to go. In that time, we're going to have a pre-recorded uh, session ready for you. Uh, that shows a little bit the company history, the uh, vision actually, what we're aiming to do, and uh, also some details actually about what's inside uh, the scan head and the laser controller. And after that, we are back, um, and then everything is set up, and we are ready to go. So talk to you any minute. Welcome back, everybody, to our company presentation uh, and our introduction about the MPX series. A multimodal microscope. I'm going to lead you in the next uh, 10 minutes uh, through a couple of slides showing you our capabilities and our vision actually why we are doing this what we are doing. So our vision. So we want to have an easy access uh, to multimodality and uh, state-of-the-art 2P and 3P microscopy. We think microscopes should work out of the box. They should uh, come as a turnkey instrument. Um, it should be an easy access plug and play instrument that you can just unpack from your pallet once it gets delivered to your institute and you pull it out, you put it on your workbench or your optical table or wherever you need it and you turn it on and it should work. Uh, obviously the instrument should operate in 24-7 in a 24-7 environment and it should give you a flexible setup in terms of an upright or inverted or even in any uh, oblique angle. Uh, imaging. So we think every researcher, scientist and clinician should have an easy access to uh, an easy to use turnkey multimodal microscope. So what, what is our core competence? So we focus on a tight integration of the femtosecond laser engine into a complex uh, microscope setup. So mechanically, electrically integrated software control air cooling. Uh, perfectly matched for 2P and 3P imaging uh, performance. It should be a turnkey instrument, it should work out of the box, so no more tinkering and you know day-to-day -day installation and tweaking by a PhD or by a postdoc or even a master student. It should just work and uh, there should be no long-term installation required by an engineer or technician. Uh, our data acquisition and the laser scanning control is uh, based on video scan image uh, premium uh, version actually. And we also developed our own Chromograzer uh, software which runs on the native Microsoft Windows 10 environment and is also communicating with an embedded uh, microcontroller. Chromograzer uh, takes care of the overall microscope operation and uh, debugging uh, device uh, status analysis and uh, monitoring of the overall system. Obviously, we are supporting open standards like Fiji, ImageJ, and MATLAB and MicroManager. And um, we want to provide our customers a single point of contact. So when your imaging gets bad or your, your images get blurry, you don't need to either call the uh, femtosecond laser manufacturer or the microscope manufacturer you can call us and we take care of the overall system. Uh, sorry. So, 
what do we offer? At the moment, we have three standard versions uh, of our multimodal microscope. Uh, the first version is the MPX1040. It comes with a fixed wavelength built in. It offers you uh, about uh, a one watt or uh, 600 milliwatt actually uh, operation at the sample from the femtosecond laser with uh, 100, 120 femtoseconds uh, measured after Nikon 16x objective. And um, uh, it comes with a bunch of uh, options actually you can add for the MPX1040. For example, we offer resonant galvo galvo scanning. Uh, single photon fluorescence, bright field modality, uh, PSOC stage, uh, PFOX system. Uh, I will come later on uh, in more detail to those options, but there are a bunch of op options you can add to the MPX 1040. We offer a second model, which is the MPX 920 fixed wavelengths. So this model offers actually two wavelengths, which are built in. Uh, first of all, it's the 1040 nanometer wavelength, and in addition to the 1040, we have the 920 nanometer. The 1040 and 920 nanometers, uh, they cover a broad range of applications actually, and, and you can do a lot with those two wavelengths. They are simultaneously in the system, so you, you can either then choose one of the other wavelengths, or you can run them both uh, simultaneously, uh, which also offers later on uh, other experiments like CARS uh, or SRS imaging. Uh, later in the year, uh, we're going to offer the MPX Tune, which is a fully tunable system covering the range from about 750 nanometers up to 1250 uh, nanometers. Uh, that will be released uh, most likely in uh, Q4 in 2021. Uh, so, uh, every version can be upgraded, as I already mentioned, with a bunch of uh, uh, options, and uh, of course, uh, it, the, the, um, it's all a turnkey, it's still a turnkey system. So no matter which option you're going to choose, it's a turnkey system, it works out of the box, and it's still easy to install. Um, so, a quick introduction to the modality one, the multi-photon modality. Uh, as I said, we, we, we are building in a uh, femtosecond laser. It offers a tight integration into the software and the electronic and mechanic environment. Um, you can add the resonant uh, scanning, the resonant Galvo-Galvo scanning. Uh, standard is, of course, Galvo-Galvo scanning. And uh, we, we are working with our proprietary, fully customized uh, scan and tube lens to really maximize modern objectives uh, like the Nikon 16X or the Olympus uh, 25X uh, with a high NA and uh, enabling a large field of view and an optimized uh, PSF at the sample. The, um, uh, fluorescence collection is based on large optics, so we have a large uh, dichroic beam split right at the objective, offering the capability of uh, maximizing the fluorescence collection. And um, standard-wise, we offer two gallium arsenide uh, phosphate uh, PMTs, uh, and uh, the system can be upgraded up to four uh, GASP uh, PMTs. Of course, uh, the uh, uh, Transimpedance transcendent, transcendent amplifiers and other software parts and electronic parts are tightly integrated into our Chromograzer software and it's very easy to the, for the user to simply choose bandwidth, uh, gain and uh, other, other, um, uh, other stuff with the software. Um, the, um, in the, the whole construction of the system is laid out so that the femtosecond laser is permanently aligned to the scan optics and to the detection optics. So over time and uh, even during temperature swings in your lab, if they happen, the system is always permanently aligned and you don't need to worry about the day-to-day -day alignment procedure or, or weekly or monthly uh, maintenance routines. The modality two, the single photo on AP fluorescence imaging, this is a modality you can add to our system. Uh, it's, it has a built-in high-performance eight-channel LED source for a single photon uh, excitation. Um, we are using highly efficient achromatic illumination optics uh, in curler setup and uh, the PETA band and the quant band filter sets they are included and uh, you can change them individually uh, matching the dyes and uh, the, the specimen you're trying to image. Uh, the camera is based on an SCMOS uh, monochrome camera, camera with a high quantum efficiency and the, uh, uh, the unique feature is the scan optic path from the epi and the multi-photon path is shared, so co-registration is very easy uh, among your images. Uh, the, of course, the, um, 
A CMOS camera is uh, compatible with ScanImage or with MicroManager and uh, Chromogazer. The uh, third modality, the wide field imaging, basically we are trying to mimic a white light with our eight channel LED. So we have a predefined setting of all the channels and you have to choose a, um, a flat uh, dichroic mirror in order to make use of the white light. Um, we use for that a colored CMOS camera, which can also be built in if you order the option. And the, uh, again, the optics path is shared with the epifluorescence and the multi-photon fluorescence. So co-registration among your images is uh, straightforward actually. Um, so a quick overview for the software and the interface. So we are using ScanImage as our main uh, scanning software. I think it's, it's, it's well known in the community actually and um, um, not much to say. It's pre-installed on all our systems so you just double click on it and it, it opens and it's, it's, it's ready to go from the very beginning. The uh, Chromogazer is a uh, proprietary software developed in-house. Chromogazer controls the different modalities from our microscopes. It gives you a device status uh, overview and if there's an error occurs you can easily check with Chromogazer. So all the uh, laser controls, PMD controls, uh, the gain, the, the uh, uh, bandwidth and also the, um, uh, the, the um, signal strength can be checked with uh, Chromogazer. Uh, obviously it's fully scriptable. So if you want to integrate to a lab view, a Python environment, it's straightforward and very easy to do actually. We, open, uh, we, we support open standards. So uh, Fiji comes uh, pre-installed on our systems and of course uh, Micromanager comes pre-installed with all the settings uh, adapted and uh, uh, fitting to our uh, microscope. So quick overview of how we really do it. Uh, so this is a schematic of our scan head. Uh, so the femtosecond laser is built in, we have all the electronics built in, uh, excitation source, cameras, fluorescence cameras, PMTs, and of course the Galvo scanners. It's all built in and the scan head is connected to the controller via a uh, flexible umbilical. It's up to two meters long, so it's very easy to actually set up your microscope on a bench or optical table and leave the uh, microscope controller underneath your table. Uh, the advantage is because the scan head is connected to the controller with an umbilical, you can freely move it in 3D actually. So if you put it on a translation stage, it, it moves and it will be permanently aligned. Uh, you can put it uh, from, from an upright to an inverted position and you can even scan in under an oblique angle your samples. So what are the benefits of this setup actually? Um, the whole system is very easy to transport. So if you want to move from one lab to the other lab, uh, if you want to move to your animals in the basement, it's no problem, you just pack it up, you go. Um, it's, it's ready for wetbench experiments, so there's no optical table needed. Uh, as you saw in our setup here, we do have an optical table. That's mainly due to our company, company's facility, but you can actually put it on, a, on a, any bench which is uh, firmly solid and, and, and um, not too shaky actually. Uh, there's no air conditioning required in, in your lab. Uh, the system is uh, temperature controlled, so temperature swings should not be any problem and it should work uh, during the whole day. There's no water cooling, no chiller, it's a very quiet system. Uh, the software we are using and the hardware are very powerful. It's a built-in Microsoft Windows PC gaming architecture, very high performance uh, uh, um, structure and uh, the pre-configured scan image and micromanager and image share software comes bundled together with all the other software on the, on the, in the instrument. We have the, as I already mentioned, uh, Chromogazer, it's an in-house developed system to control the whole microscope and give you a system status and uh, error status messages if it should occur. So that's how it looks like. Here you see a rendering of our system and there are some real pictures of our first prototype. Basically consists of a controller which comes underneath the table. There's an umbilical and you put the scan head and your monitor PC mouse um, on your table. You can see here some real pictures from our lab actually. These are the real, this is the first prototype that we built. The red box illustrates the um, 
the, the scan head, as we call it. And you can see here we are trying to image some, some samples uh, in our in-house uh, application area. Because, as I already mentioned, the, the scan head is connected to controller with an umbilical, so it's very easy to go from an upright configuration into an inverted configuration. You can see here a sketch how the inverted configuration looks like. Basically, you, need to, you only need a mechanical adapter plate that turns the uh, microscope upside down and you can easily use it for any inverted experiment. Because it's still connected to the XYZ stages, you can also have the full travel of the XYZ stages. I also have to mention here, we're using a standard XYZ stages from Zebra. They give us about 100 millimeter travel. It's, it's a very compact system. It's very robust. Uh, it nicely matches into the scan image uh, environment. But of course, we are open to use any other XYZ movements uh, per your request or per other requirements. That's, that's not a problem. Um, yeah, of course, COVID was also a challenge for us. But we were lucky, we had a, an early customer uh, who was using actually the microscope in his lab, in his own lab, and then COVID struck and uh, he was not allowed to work in his lab anymore. So the customer simply put the microscope in the trunk of his car, drove home, set it up in his own, uh, in his flat, in his apartment, and the, the pictures are not that clear actually, but uh, you can see here that the microscope works nicely in his own apartment. Uh, he installed it besides his uh, bench, only he was adding a, a, a pretty solid uh, um, table here underneath the microscope, but uh, it works very nicely during the pandemic and he can continue his work in his apartment with a two-photon microscope. Probably this was the only uh, two-photon or multi-photon microscope installed in a, an apartment yet uh, worldwide. So we come to the end, slowly but surely. So it's an all-in-one imaging solution, our MPX series. It allows, uh, it allows whole slide imaging. Uh, we have developed script for whole slide imaging. Uh, 2P, 3P uh, imaging, uh, C-stack imaging, AP fluorescence imaging, and obviously SHG, THG imaging, all done in one instrument. Okay, welcome back to our live presentation. Um, I will give you a brief overview about the microscope and the specs we are working with today. And then we will just jump into our live presentation. We will start with the single photon imaging. And in the last step, we will do the multi photon imaging. So uh, as Lucas already said, our microscope today is in the upright um, configuration. But of course, you can just invert the whole setup so that you have an inverted microscope. For our today's presentation, I chose a 16x water immersion objective, but you can screw in any objective of your choice uh, with any immersion medium, of course. You have four different positions for that. Uh, over here, you can find um, the filter cube for the single photon imaging. Um, today, we have a pentaband filter that allows us to image um, five different wavelengths um, if we want. And on the upper side over here, you can see um, the filter cubes for the multi-photon imaging, which you can easily just change. For our today's presentation, uh, we have two filter cubes built in. Um, the first one is for the SHG imaging, which is at 520 nanometers in our case, and um, another um, filter cube for the two-photon imaging, which is at 595 nanometers. Okay, um, I think that is pretty much it about the configuration and the specs. Um, of course, we need a dark room for fluorescence imaging. Therefore, we turn off the lights um, right now and we switch to my desktop. But of course, you can still hear me talking. Okay, now we can start with our single photon imaging. And um, I start the live modus, I turn on the light and I use the blue channel uh, to find the focus because blue is very convenient for most of the tissues that you can find um, the focus very easily. And here we already are. Um, for our today's presentation we have a sample, it's a cryosection, unstained cryosection of a mouse tail uh, which I just mounted into an anti-fade medium. And so we can have a look at the outer fluorescence only. 
And um, you can see here um, the molecular structures. Um, here's the edge of the mouse tail. You have the cellular layer, the skin layer, and of course some muscle and cartilage tissue. I chose a um, 40 micrometer thick um, cryosection because we can see um, some structures in the single photon, of course, but with some background fluorescence, and we can compare the single photon with the multi photon imaging um, with this thickness. If you use um, very thin samples like three micrometers, you have a perfectly image, of course, also in the single photon channel. I will just increase the LED intensity a little bit and scroll in a little bit to set the focus perfectly and I will save the image. And all the images that you acquire with this microscope are in a 16-bit TIFF file that makes it very easy for you for the um, pre-processing of the images. And um, then we choose another wavelengths, for example, the red wavelengths, to see some differences in the autofluorescence. And therefore, we choose some wavelengths that are not so close together. I also save this image over here. And, of course, all of the images that we will um, acquire during this live presentation, I will pre-process, so I will color them and make an overlay image, and we will upload these images on our website. So you can check it out later and give us some feedback about it. Okay, so this is um, what's a single photon imaging. I will turn off all of the LED lights, and then we can just switch into the multi-photon imaging. This is our interface for the multi-photon imaging. Over here you can reset the PMTs and set the PMT gain. And over here you can um, set the laser intensity and of course turn off and on the laser. Um, the multi-photon imaging is scan image based. I think most of you that are working with scanning microscopy um, are very familiar with the scanning software. All the um, parameters are already set um, for um, finding the focus or uh, realigning the position for your region of interest. I always choose a little bit lower resolution from 512, but of course for the image itself we will increase the resolution. Um, right now we have a dwell time from 0 0.2 microseconds per pixel, which is um, convenient for most of the imaging. Then we can open the shutter to turn on our laser and just switch into the live modus and we're already here we have to reset our PMT in the second channel and I, as I told you before in the first channel we can see the SHG signal which is at 520 nanometers and in the second channel um, you can see the two photon image which is at 595 nanometers in this case I will um, I will go to a little different um, region of interest over here that you can see the uh, muscle tissue and the collagen tissue a little bit more, um, a little bit better maybe over here. And then we can refocus a little bit. So now you can clearly see the differences between the single photon and the multi photon because now we have a very plain. Um, image with no really background fluorescence. I can stop the live modus and then we will increase the resolution and start the imaging process again so that we have high resolution images of course. Just auto scale this a little bit and stop the acquisition. Then we can save this image also as TIFF files. This one is the SHG at 520 and this one is the two photon image at 595. Save them. And um, because we are looking at the out of resonance, um, it could happen that you don't have this strong signal like in this two photon channel over here, then you just can increase the number of images that will be averaged and start focus again. And now you can see that with every frame, the, uh, the image will getting a little bit brighter. They can, the 
see the structures more properly. And here you can see the amounts. It's four images right now. Just do the auto scale that we can view the live modus. And seven. Another two images to go. And the last one. Okay, and then we can abort the imaging process and I will also save these images is again the SHG with 10 averages and the two photon with 10 averages. You can find all of the images as I said before on our website. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, let's turn on the light again and I can pass back to Lucas. Uh, thank you for joining in and welcome back. We had a very nice presentation from Steffi about uh, slide imaging. Uh, you can see it was a live presentation, so we do have actually some camera gear in here and audio recording systems, so there was some stray light uh, in our uh, fluorescence channel number two, as you could see, some stripes in there. But anyway, that's uh, when it's live, uh, without uh, too much um, control about other equipment in the lab. So thank you very much for joining in. If you have some comments, uh, we appreciate your feedback. Uh, I think as a startup company as we are, it's very important that uh, we get your feedback from experienced users. What can we improve? What you would like to see in our next design revision? And um, as you can see, it's very easy to transport. So we are happy to ship it to your team, to your institute, to your facility. You can try it out. You ha can have a live demo with your team, with your samples, and uh, check out our microscope. So hopefully to see you on the web page, uh, it's www.p-ins.com or perspective-instruments.com. And uh, yeah, we are happy to see you maybe in um, Chicago, middle of November at Neuroscience 2021. So hopefully to see you next time in Chicago, middle of November at the Neuroscience uh, 2021 in person. See you then. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.